a duodenal stricture can be observed in the clinical cause of chronic pancreatitis. Much less common or well known is the occurrence of cysts within the duodenal wall. Duodenal wall cysts may arise in various situations and have been reported under many different names. Cystic dystrophy in heterotopic pancreas, cystic dystrophy of the duodenal wall, groove pancreatitis. There are no epidemiological data regarding the prevalence and incidence of cysts within the duodenal wall in the general population. A recent Italian survey which reviewed data on chronic pancreatitis in Italy in mixed medical surgical cases between 2000 and 2005 reported that the frequency of groove pancreatitis was 6.2 percent, that is 55 out of 893 patients. Groove pancreatitis has many aspects in common with cystic dystrophy of the duodenal wall and in many reported cases, the clinical presentation, pain, vomiting, and jaundice, and radiological, endosonographical, and pathological features overlap in so many important aspects that they may be considered variants of the same disease. For these reasons, the unifying name paraduodenal pancreatitis has been proposed. Paraduodenal pancreatitis is believed to be infrequent and a recent systematic review of the literature reported that the main therapeutic option for these patients remains the surgical approach, with a few cases treated medically and or endoscopically. Ribos et al. reported a medical surgical series of paraduodenal pancreatitis the diagnosis of which was based on validated radiological criteria to avoid the need for surgical resection and pathological specimen examination. Since 1995, magnetic resonance imaging findings and endoscopic aspect have been the major criteria for the diagnosis of paraduodenal pancreatitis and a combined endoscopic and medical approach is always proposed before surgery in the setting of a medical surgical tertiary care department. In their study entitled Non-Invasive Treatment of Paraduodenal Pancreatitis, Arvani Takis et al. reviewed the outcomes of patients with paraduodenal pancreatitis when this multidisciplinary approach with endotherapy as the first line of treatment is followed. Here is what they have to say. Background and study aims. Paraduodenal pancreatitis is histologically well-defined, but its epidemiology, natural history, and connection with chronic pancreatitis are not completely understood. The aim of the study was to review the endoscopic and medical management of paraduodenal pancreatitis, patients and methods. Medical records of all patients with paraduodenal pancreatitis diagnosed by magnetic resonance cholangiopancreatography or endoscopic ultrasonography between 1995 and 2010 were retrospectively reviewed. Clinical features, imaging procedures, and treatments were investigated. The primary endpoint was the rate of clinical success, and the secondary endpoints were the radiological or endoscopic improvement, complication rate, and overall survival rate. Results. A total of 51 patients were included in the study. 88.2% alcohol abuse, median age 49 years, range 37 to 70, 50 men. The most frequent symptoms at presentation were pain and weight loss. Chronic pancreatitis was present in 36 patients and 45 patients had cysts. Other findings included stricture of the pancreatic duct, common bile duct, and duodenum. A total of 39 patients 
underwent initial endoscopic treatment. Cystenterostomy, pancreatic and or biliary duct drainage, and or duodenal dilatation. For the patients with available follow-up, 24 patients required repeat endoscopy, and nine patients required surgery after the initial endoscopic management. After a median follow-up of 54 months, complete clinical success was achieved in 70.7% of patients and the overall survival rate was 94.1%. Conclusions. This is the largest series concerning the management of paraduodenal pancreatitis using endotherapy as the first-line intervention. Although repeat endoscopic procedures were required in half of the patients, no severe complication was observed and surgical treatment was ultimately needed in less than 25% of the patients.